Hey, what's going on everybody? It is your boy Hobo here again with some more NFL predictions. This time, <clears throat> excuse me, it is week 13. <clears throat> Holy smokes. I guess all that ice cream I ate is coming back to haunt me now that I'm trying to start this review. Uh, review? I don't even know what I'm doing. Predictions for week 13 in the NFL. That was an impressive segue. Great job, Zach. You were awesome. So we kick things off, and, and since it is the Thanksgiving holiday for our United States residents. I will try to keep this thing short and sweet just so you guys can uh, not have to listen to me yabber and get to some turkey. So, we kick things off Thursday the 28th at noon 30 p.m. with the Chicago Bears visiting the Detroit Lions. So the Lions are an institution on Thanksgiving. They've played like 74 games on Thanksgiving or something insane like that. <clears throat> and, uh, the Bears are 3-0 and versus the Lions under head coach Matt Nagy. Also, something that's not looking up for the Lions is they're down to their third-string quarterback. And, you know, all respect to the guy. You know, he worked hard to get to the NFL, but I don't know his name. But he has a tall task ahead of him. He's got to face Chicago's defense. I don't know really what that means anymore because Chicago's defense is a shell of its former self from a year ago. It's still a good defense, though, and the Lions are going to have a tall task ahead of them. My pick will be the Chicago Bears, just due to the fact that I think the Lions aren't going to have enough offensively to match wits, even with <clears throat> disabled child uh, Mitchell Trubisky running the opposite offense. So I'm going to pick the Bears. Then at 4.30 p.m. on Thursday, the second game in our triple header will be the Buffalo Bills at 8-3, taking on the 6-5 Dallas Cowboys. So the Cowboys have no wins against teams with 500 or better records. <clears throat> and the Bills, they're along 15.7 points per game this year. That is mighty, mighty impressive. And they're facing a Cowboys team that comes off an ugly loss to the uh Hoosier Maguala, the uh, New England Patriots. That's the that's what I was looking for. So the Patriots handed it to Dallas. I mean, pretty much all night long on Sunday afternoon. It wasn't a pretty game <clears throat> for the Cowboys. I don't think anybody really expected it to be, but they didn't look good at all. They're facing a Bills team that sure is eight and three, and they've had their bad losses, but. They're, they're a, a good team. They're coming into their own. They are currently in the playoff picture. They are the sixth, fifth seed, excuse me, in the AFC, and they look pretty good. I'm going to pick the Bills. The Cowboys just, they cannot beat teams that are good because they are simply not good. They're not a good football team. And as you see on the ticker down below, Madden thinks the Buffalo Bills are going to win 38-7. to I don't think it'll be that brutal for the Dallas Cowboys, but I do think they will be handed an L on Thanksgiving Day. Next up, the final game on our Thanksgiving triple header will be the New Orleans Saints at 9-2, taking on the 3-8 Atlanta Falcons. So we just saw the Falcons beat the Saints a couple of weeks ago. Very, very weird circumstance in that game. I get it. Kind of a trap game situation. Oh, my God. Darius Slayton, go. Oh, Adrian Amos, you better not. Oh, you whore. I was going to go 90 yards for the touchdown, but uh, just go from the 10 to the 10. I'll take it. All right, I got sidetracked. So <clears throat> the Falcons, they came out of their bye week firing. They had two nice-looking wins. Then they come out, and they laid an egg against Tampa Bay. So now they're back in the same hole they were in for the first eight weeks of the season, and they are absolute dog shit. And the Saints, on the other hand, come off a really impressive, in my opinion, win against the Carolina Panthers. And they just, to me, proved in that game that no matter what you can throw at them, really, they're going to be successful. And that's really important. You know, you, you have to be a team that can face adversity and, and still manage to pull out. And I know the Saints' two losses are kind of freaky. Like, their first loss was to, uh, oh, oh boy there. But their first loss was to L.A. 
and LA is not good, but that was the game Drew Brees got hurt, and Teddy B wasn't really, you know, he wasn't really expecting getting thrown into that role, and then their second loss was to Atlanta, and Atlanta kind of caught him slipping. And the Saints are going to let that happen again. They're going to pick up a big win on uh, Thanksgiving night and become the second team in the NFC with 10 wins. Next, we go to Sunday, December 1st. Yep, we are all ready in December. And I will be attending an NFL football game this weekend. And I will let you know what game it is when we get to time. When we get to the time to predict that game. But until then, we have the 2-9 and nine Washington Redskins against the 5-6 and six Carolina Panthers. So the Panthers have won five of their last six against Washington. And if, uh, well, I mean, they're playing in Carolina, so tickets aren't going to go for $4. So maybe they can... You know, the Redskins can finally perform what they do for a living in front of an actual crowd of human beings. So, I don't know. It, it, you know, in all seriousness, the Redskins, they're bad. And, I mean, Dwayne Haskins, I don't think, is the guy for them. He's just, he's not an NFL quarterback. He's got a long way to go to prove to me that he is even remotely a starter in the National Football League. I mean, he is not good at all and Josh Allen on the other hand has done a lot to show me that he is ready for that spot and I know he had a shaky couple of weeks a few weeks ago but he's still a young guy you know he's a rookie I think but I mean he might not be a rookie I could be completely wrong but I know he's still a young guy and he's he's working through a lot in this offense and it's you know it's it's just a unique situation to be thrown into to have to come in in relief of a former NFL MVP. Like, that's a very strange situation for a lot of guys. And not many people get the opportunity to be in that position. And Josh Allen, I think, has done a very good job of taking a terrible, terrible situation for him and turning it into something really awesome. And he's done a lot good with it. And he has played very well. So, I like the Panthers in this game. You know, Josh Allen... And, and Christian McCaffrey are just a, a duo that I, as a Giants fan, would not want to see on the opposite side of my defense. And I know Washington's not very happy uh, seeing those guys line up against them either. So I'm picking the Carolina Panthers to win this game. Then it's the 4-7 and seven Jets against the 0-11 Bengals. Oh boy, the Bengals are so boring, they've got me yawning. Ah, so the Jets have scored 34 in three straight games. They are on fire. They cannot be stopped. They are 4-7. and seven. They still have a freaking snowball's chance in hell to sneak into the playoffs. But it would come as a 9-7 and seven wild card and they'd have to win out. And boy, oh boy, is that going to be a tough task with these good uh, AFC teams stretching out for the wild card now. And... Their early season just put them at such a disadvantage. But, I mean, now if you're a Jets fan, you can build towards your future. You can kind of examine the chemistry you have between Robbie Anderson and Sam Darnold and Le'Veon Bell. Because that's your, that's, your, that's your Cerberus right there. That's your three-headed monster that you have to be able to rely on week in, week out. And clearly, they've been doing something right. They're on a three-game win streak, and they've won each of those games scoring 34 points. And that's pretty impressive. But when I look at the Cincinnati Bengals, they tried the Jeff Driscoll experiment for a few weeks just to evaluate what they had. I mean, they obviously, after they hit their ninth win, they were, or their ninth loss, excuse me, they were done. Really, once they hit their eighth one, they were done. So they knew, why not check out what we've got? You know, why not see potentially Andy Dalton's successor if he's on our roster? Because we're going to get the first overall pick. Why spend it on a quarterback if we've got one waiting? You know what I mean? Especially to a guy that's already been in your system for an entire half a year. And you don't have to, to waste that first round pick and waste four years on him. And go through the process. And then and be in a situation like the Rams are with Jared Goff. Or the Cleveland Browns are with Baker Mayfield. You get to evaluate the talent in-house and then evaluate from there. And the Bengals are going back to Andy Dalton for this game. And I think it's going to mean a lot. And honestly, I see the Bengals pulling out the upset. Yes, 
uh, you heard me correctly. And no, I have not been drinking too many glasses of sparkling champagne, sparkling uh, grape juice as it is, as I just bought another bottle today. Because I fancy a little bit of the bubbly, but I do not drink alcohol. So uh, I go with the sparkling grape juice. That's my that's my uh, sparkling juice of choice. I don't even know how I got there. However, the Bengals are going to get a win on Sunday, in my estimation. And they will get out of the doghouse. They will not go 0-16. But that might very well be the last one of the year. But I'm going for the Bengals. Next up, it is the 6-5 Titans taking on the 6-5 Colts. The Colts have won three straight against Tennessee, and this game means a lot more than just being a December game between two division opponents. Obviously, as you know, they're both 6-5. and five. They are one game back from the Houston Texans, and that is very, very important as we get so ever so close to the playoffs because at any given, you know, on any given Sunday, especially with the fact that that the Texans are 7-4 and four right now, whoever wins that game is going, if they have already beaten Houston, so that would be Indianapolis, will be the number one team in the AFC South if Houston loses, which is insane because after this weekend, you can have an entire changeup in the dichotomy of the AFC South. That's incredible to me. But for this specific game, Ryan Tannehill, absolutely. Him and Derrick Henry, oh my god, went off last week. I don't even remember who they played. Jacksonville. They played Jacksonville. And that's not a that's not a bad defense by any stretch of the imagination. They hung 40 on Jacksonville. And I'm not saying like, oh boy, they beat the Jags, they're going to the Super Bowl. But it was a quality win. And one that they desperately needed to start getting to the playoffs if that is their ultimate destination. And I think Ryan Tannehill for them is the man for the job. I've been a fan of Ryan Tannehill for his entire career. Many of you know that. And I mean, if you go back and listen to some of my prediction videos from years past, I probably haven't said the most flattering things about him. But I say, you know, unflattering things about some of the all-time greats of the league. It's just the way it is, you know, I gotta cut the shit down to brass tacks when time comes, you know, to do so. And he deserved all the criticism he got for bad games, and he deserves his rightful uh, celebration now that he is enjoying some success. And I feel very good for Ryan Tannehill, and I feel good about the Tennessee uh, Titans picking up a win on Sunday against Indianapolis. I have not seen any realm of consistency out of Indianapolis that tells me, yeah, this team is poised to make a run. And losing Andrew Luck was the biggest factor in why this team will never be back to an AFC championship for as long as Jacoby Brissett is the starting quarterback. Losing Andrew Luck has completely derailed this franchise for the foreseeable future and that stinks it sucks to know you're in a hole like that and I know Jacoby's a supremely talented kid he's a very good passer of the football but he's just not the man for the job and if he can't win these kinds of games like they're gonna have to win on Sunday every game from this point on is must win you lose one game from here on out, you can pretty much kiss the playoffs goodbye. If you have five losses or more, you are done after this week, really. I mean, you just got to start stacking the wins now because it is now or never in this league in Indianapolis. If, if my prediction comes true and they lose, they can all but kiss the playoffs goodbye. They were thinking Super Bowl at the beginning of the year before Andrew Luck decided to hang the cleats up. And now they're thinking what they're going to be doing in, in January, sitting on their couch eating potato chips, watching the Texans run through the entire wild card and first round of the playoffs. And that sucks. But it's just the harsh reality of, of football. And I've got Tennessee. <laughs> Next up, it's the 4-7 Bucks versus the 4-7 Jags. 
And the Buccaneers have never beaten the Jaguars in Jacksonville. They're 0-3 all-time in the great city of Jacksonville, Florida. And I see this changing on Sunday afternoon. The Buccaneers offense. I mean, people like to talk shit about uh, Jameis Winston. And I do it as well because he sucks. I think he's one of the worst quarterbacks playing football. But he has some friggin' ability to put the ball in the hands of his playmakers. And it is just unparalleled. It's just a sight to behold. And those guys, Mike Evans and, and, and Godwin, they are two of the best receivers doing it right now. And that has a lot more to do with their talents than what Jameis Winston is doing, believe you me. Um, but, you know, I give Jameis a little bit of credit. He is given them the ability to win some football games, but he's also... Jameis is the supreme Jameis. Like, I have no other comparison for him. Jameis giveth and Jameis taketh. You know what I mean? Like, he'll give you four touchdowns, but he's throwing four interceptions. That's just the way the cookie crumbles with him. He's throwing, like, like 100 interceptions this season. I don't even know. Let me see if I can even get the stats. That would be something fun. I would love to see Jameis Winston's stats this year. Interceptions thrown per game. <laughs> Tampa Bay is averaging 1.8. So they're almost averaging two interceptions a friggin' game with this kid at quarterback. The last time these two teams played, August 30th um, of 2018. That's not right. That can't be right. Did they really knock out two games last year in the first what the hell? That's completely bogus. All right, NFL app. Whoever wrote that shit is ridiculous. August 30th, 2018 is not right. All right, so NFL app is broken. That's that's all we need to know. But I'm picking the Buccaneers. I like their offense versus the Jags defense, and I don't think Nick Foles is going to be able to stay upright with guys like Big Boy Vita V coming right at him. I don't even know if that's how you say his name. But it's how you kind of pronounce the short version of his name. Because I'm not even going to attempt the long version of his name. So I'm going with the Bucks. Next up, the game that I will be in attendance for. The Green Bay Packers at 8-3 versus the New York Football Giants at 2-9. and nine. So a little bit of background for you, ladies and gentlemen. I am a diehard New York Giants fan. Everybody on this channel knows it. Everybody that watches these videos knows it. I am the biggest New York Giants fan you will ever meet in your entire life. I love them with all my heart and soul. I have a Victor Cruz jersey, a Sterling Shepard jersey, an Odell Beckham, a Justin Tuck, a Jason Pierre Paul, an Eli Manning, and a signed Saquon Barkley jersey hanging on my wall. I love them to death. I have a helmet up, I've got a rally towel. I, this entire room is New York freaking Giants, man. I'm going to paint one of the walls blue. I love them with my entire being as much as I hate them. That being said, Aaron Rodgers, many of you know, is my favorite player of all time. And coming into this season, I was blessed with the ability earlier in the year to see the Cleveland Browns play which is something I wanted to do. I wanted to see some of my favorite players currently in the league, Baker Mayfield, Jarvis Landry, and Odell Beckham play. And I got that ability. And I was very thankful and very blessed to have done so. Then, I was able to see Tom Brady and Julian Edelman, something I really wanted to do before Tom Brady retired. And I got the ability to do that. And now I am getting the ability to see Aaron Rodgers play football. So you bet your ass I'm going to MetLife Stadium on Sunday wearing his Green Bay Packers jersey. I'm going to my home for the first time, mind you, going to a Giants game. Not supporting the New York Giants. And no, it has nothing to do with them being 2-9. and nine. It has nothing to do with how bad they've been for the past few years. But it has everything to do with the fact that I need to see Aaron Rodgers play football before he retires. And I feel like my chances are getting slimmer and slimmer. I was nervous he wasn't going to make it this far into the year without getting hurt. He did, and now I'm getting the opportunity to see him. And God damn it, I'm not going to give that up for the world. 
I'm going with the Green Bay Packers on Sunday. Next up, the Eagles and the Dolphins. The Eagles are 5-6. and six, The Dolphins are 2-9. and nine. I like the Eagles in this game, even though Carson Wentz is struggling to throw accurate footballs with his feet set in the pocket. And no, I'm not saying that as a joke or a dig. It's just the truth. Uh, he's really been struggling these past few weeks. But that being said, I mean, Miami has just looked so bad defensively all year long. So I've got Philadelphia. Next up, probably the best game of the 1 p.m. slate, and I'm not even going to friggin' be able to watch it, and that hurts. But the San Francisco 49ers at 10-1 and go to Baltimore to take on the Ravens at 9-2. and And the Ravens have won seven straight games. That game they played on Monday night versus L.A. was something to behold. Lamar Jackson is the friggin' truth. That defense is elite, and that team is poised for big things. But the 49ers' defense is its insane. I mean, what can I say? Their defense is so friggin' good. The What they did to Aaron Rodgers last week, I, I've never seen a Hall of Fame quarterback go down like that before. As my game is now chugging. There we go. But I've never seen a Hall of Fame quarterback have a, 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 such an abysmal performance before. It was something I, something out of a friggin' movie. I don't know. Like, remember the Titans or some bullshit like that? Like the Longest Yard. That's a that's a movie for you wrestling fans who are football fans. Go 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 check it out with Adam Sandler and Stone Cold and the Great Khali and Goldberg and some other people. Um. But the 49ers and the Ravens are probably the two most evenly matched teams in all of football. They are, in my humble opinion, the best two teams in the entire National Football League. And it's going to come down to one thing for each team. For the Ravens, it's going to come down to their ability to stop George Kittle. Because we can see, or we saw on Monday night last week, just the way George Kittle ignited them against Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay defense. He led that team all night long and it was it was largely on the you know the big ass shoulders of George Kittle who was a wrestling fan. But and for the 49ers it's going to take a herculean effort to slow down Lamar Jackson. I don't think it's possible. Honestly, I don't think it's possible to slow Lamar Jackson down. He is just so freaking good. I I, I don't see it. I've got the Ravens in this game. Yeah. yeah. I've got the Ravens in this game, and I've got them winning big. I want to say it's somewhere in the realm of 35 to 20. I want this thing to be a two-score game for Baltimore. That's my prediction. And the Ravens are going to start making a serious case to take that number one seed in the AFC, and it's going to come down to the Sunday night game, and I'll get into that later. I'll loop this all the way back around. But I've got to start hurrying up. We've only got a minute, four seconds on the clock. The Browns at 5-6 and six and the Steelers at 6-5. and five. Mason Rudolph's not playing. Miles Garrett isn't playing. Nobody's going to get a helmet swung at anybody. And the Browns are going to pick up their second victory against these clowns in the past three weeks. I like Cleveland. The Rams and the Cardinals. The Rams have looked so bad. And Kyler Murray has been not phenomenal, but he's been very good. And I, I'm a big fan of Kyler Murray, so... I'm going with Arizona on Sunday as I like to step out of bounds, save some time on this video. Then the Raiders at 6-5 and five and the Chiefs at 7-4. and four. I like the Raiders in an upset. Their ability to run the football is just so good, and the Chiefs' defense can't stop the run for, you know, if their mothers were on life support, they probably couldn't stop the friggin' run. And, I mean, their offense just isn't the same as it was last year. I don't know what's what's the problem, but... I can't put my finger on it. Pat Mahomes doesn't look right. That offense doesn't look good. I like uh, I like Oakland. Then it will be the four and seven Chargers visiting the three and eight Broncos. Neither of these teams are going to the playoffs, so it's basically a pride game. And uh, I like Denver. Surprisingly, I'm gonna pick them. I don't think uh, Philip Rivers has gotten all of his recent blunders out of his head yet, so I'm taking Denver. Then Sunday Night Football, NBC, 10-1 New England versus 7-4 Houston. The Texans are 0-5 against New England under Bill O'Brien. 
and that includes the playoffs. And that's pretty freaking pathetic. Especially when they've had New England on the ropes multiple times and just gifted them victories. But this time, this is the first time New England gets to play ten, uh, Houston and New England does not have a superior offense. Yeah. Houston has the better offense in this game. And I really, I was, I, 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 I stuttered there because I scored and I thought that I was down by two possessions for some reason. And then I looked up and saw that I tied it and I was like, what the hell? I get some more game out of this because we're going to overtime. So I'm pretty happy. Um, but the Texans are the better team in this game. They're the better overall team to play on Sunday night. Yeah, I said it. With that being said, do I think they're going to win? Eh, I don't know. I do like them in this game because I don't think the Patriots have shown enough against good teams to say that they are who they say they are. And Baltimore really wrote the book on how to stop New England. And I know Deshaun Watson is not Lamar Jackson in terms of running the football. I think uh, Deshaun Watson's a better passer. Lamar Jackson is a better runner. I don't think anybody will debate that. And I like Houston based on the fact that, you know, you got DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller and, and, and Deshaun Watson and that team just looks good on paper. And I know on paper never really means a damn thing, but they are my pick. I like the Houston Texans. So I'm going with Houston on Sunday night. And that would mean if what I say comes true, this Sunday, New England would be bumped to the two seed and the Baltimore Ravens would become the number one seed in the American Football Conference. Believe it or not. That is what this entire video hinged on. And I just wanted to let you know that's my thoughts on what's going to happen. But wait, there's more. We have a Monday Night Football game on the 2nd of December. This is a big one for the NFC wildcard race because these it is a matchup of the two teams who are currently in the 5 and 6 seed. So it's literally the two wildcard teams. The Minnesota Vikings at 8 and 3 and the Seattle Seahawks at 9 and 2. So Seattle if they win and San Francisco loses they swap places. San Francisco becomes a wild card team, and Seattle gets the number one seed in the NFC as Saquon Barkley just ends this freaking game on me. Congratulations. Thank you, God, that that's over. But if that happens, Seattle becomes the number one seed in the conference. That's freaking mental. I just think that's crazy to me. I mean, if New Orleans wins... Uh, they will remain two, and um, wait, did, does New Orleans play? Did I already? Oh yeah, 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 they play. So New Orleans would remain two at at ten and two, and San Francisco would swap with Seattle, both being ten and two, and Seattle would go to one, and San Francisco would go to five. That <laughs> that means huge things for the entire playoff picture. For the entire complexion of the playoffs, and more importantly for the San Francisco 49ers, I think the only way they make the Super Bowl is if they are the number one seed, and now they're not even in that conversation if my theory comes true on Sunday and Monday. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what that would do to Green Bay and Minnesota is it would keep them both in the wild card, it would keep Green Bay at three, but it would keep Minnesota at six. So nothing would change there. Surprisingly, not even a Dallas victory would get them would get Dallas any closer because they are two games back from the five. Actually, they're the four seed because they're a division leader, but they're two games back from the six seed. That tells you how broken the NFL playoffs are. And I'm not even going to get into it because I'm going to get really pissed off. But my pick on Monday night is the Seattle Seahawks. Defensively, they match up really well against Minnesota. Offensively, they have a lot of firepower. And you can never rule out that bad man, Russell Wilson. They are my pick on Monday night. So, 
I have an entire shakeup of the National Football League coming here in Week 13. This is a pivotal turning point in the NFL. If your team is looking to go to the playoffs and they lose this week, kiss your sorry asses goodbye because you're probably not going to make it. If you're already in like the Kansas City Chiefs pretty much, then uh, congratulations. You have a 99% chance going into the week to win uh, or to secure a playoff spot, which is not very easy in your conference or in your division rather same thing with the with the Dallas Cowboys they haven't won the division yet and I don't think they will but uh, come on it's all pretty much wrapped up in the NFC anyway but I do enjoy the races we have at both wild card spots in the NFC and in the AFC it's so much supremely more competitive in the National Football Conference versus the American Football Conference the teams in the NFC are so much better than they are in the AFC and I don't know how anybody can dispute that. I mean, not even New England matches up with anybody in the NFC from the top six seeds, in my opinion. And Baltimore, they're not the number one seed, but they're the best team in football. And there you have it. Those are just my quick little thoughts. Uh, I like to talk about my visions of how I watch the game and what I think of things. Because I don't really get the chance to do that with you guys when I sit down every week and just break down the games. I like to tell you my thoughts and who I like and who I don't like and how I feel it's all shaking out. But, yeah, like I said, I think Baltimore is the best team in football. I know um, there's the two 10-1 teams, San Francisco, New England, but uh, I don't think that they, they – they're, they're both – they both have their big flaws and it's both offensive struggles for each team that I think are going to hinder both of them going down the stretch run. And that's why, to me, Baltimore – and Seattle are probably the two most likely teams to come out of each conference. And I know not a lot of people share that opinion, but yeah, it's, it's an opinion. And that's why I love the game of football, because it can be so opinionative, yet you can end up being so right. Like, people, like I have, um, I did an official breakdown to myself the other night, and I did an entire playoff bracket. I broke down the remaining games. And um, I did all the uh, tiebreakers and everything. And I had Cleveland going to the playoffs. And I don't think anybody really would predict that from this point going forward. But uh, anything can happen any given Sunday. So, yeah, it's week 13. I know I said I wanted to keep this video short and I went on pretty damn long. But I just enjoy talking to you guys about football. Football is my favorite thing in life. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoy some friends, some football, and some freaking family tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Eat well, stay safe, stay fun, uh, and just enjoy some freaking football. That's going to do it for me, your boy Hubbo, and I'll catch you guys next week for week 14 predictions.